Hello everyone, Taylor Johnson here. I wanted to give you a look at the uh, January market report for the Washington DC metro region, uh, the <clears throat> real estate statistics here. We can see that uh, the median sales price was more or less flat, um, but prices are holding. Um, the days on the market is increasing and uh, the months of supply is still very low, though slightly higher. 88% higher, but when we're looking at 1% to 1.02%, uh, it's still only slightly higher. Um, so we could say that perhaps the area ground to a halt in December. December was really pretty slow, kind of the, the slowest in decades in many ways. Uh, but January, we've seen a tremendous increase, uh, both in um, number of pending sales and in the uh, number of showings. So that has uh, had an effect in uh, rising the, the home demand index. Outside of market statistics, we've also seen an increase in the number of new mortgage applications. So uh, there's indications that buyers are coming back into the market and <clears throat> hopefully we will see sellers coming into the market too as they become more confident that they're actually going to sell their home um, because we are still at a tremendous shortage. Uh, somewhere in here it, it told me that we we're like at 60% lower than we were before the pandemic. Um, we'll see if we can find that number. Um, buyers who've been sitting on the market before took advantage of declining mortgage rates to get into the back market. Even though supply is still constrained, buyers appear to be more measured. Uh, it is certainly easier to negotiate uh, because homes are on the market a little longer. You do have time to look and compare um, and to think. Uh, there was price appreciation but the media, over last year, but the price is uh, about the same. And as I said before, Home demand index is up, though it's down over what it was a year ago. Um, so I think this is significant, and I'm going to read the whole thing to you. There was a sharp downturn in D.C. Uh, metro region in the housing market at the end of 2022, but that slump was brief. Buyers were eager to return, taking advantage of falling mortgage rates. Home prices held steady. However, without more inventory, it is likely prices will push higher through the spring. So this is the key thing here. We're actually seeing a decline in the number of listings, uh, but the demand is increasing. So if we have a, a lower supply and a higher demand, that's going to push prices up. What that means for sellers, um, if you are thinking of selling your home in the spring, it's a great time to do it. Start getting ready now. Reach out to me and I can give you some tips on what to do and how to be uh, most effective in that. If you're a buyer, what that means is uh, now is actually a good time to be the buyer before a bunch of other people jump into the market and um, make it more competitive and push the prices up. The market rebound reflects growing acceptance of the new normal with rates around 6 to 7%, 6 6.5% for mortgages. Uh, and longer transaction times. The supply should increase in weeks to come, though uh, we're still uh, finding it relatively limited. And uh, the city market will be resilient, but the suburbs are slightly uh, faster to recover. In terms of closed sales, they're down over the, what they were last year. Um, but um, what we've seen is new pending sales are up over what they were last month. So new pending sales are down January to January, um, but new pending sales activity increased considerably from what we looked at in December. And uh, as we said before, active listings are, um, actually the number of new listings is down but the number of active listings is up because uh, just because there are fewer sales. 
So uh, homes are remaining on the market longer, and that means the active inventory is 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 higher. Um, showings are uh, up over what they were. And so what we see here is uh, the close-in suburbs have done really well uh, and exactly also particularly Alexandria City and Arlington County uh, have seen tremendous showing activity up significantly. Region ride, here we are, supply is still just 60% of what it was prior to the pandemic. And even then, prior to the pandemic, the supply was at a shortage. So we're now 60% less than what we were at a shortage. So we're really short. Um, active listings are, are up because again, there are just fewer sales. Median prices are more or less holding steady or slightly increased. So <clears throat> here we are at closed sales. And median sales price. So the median sales price, as you can see, everywhere except Falls Church has gone up slightly. Now let's take a look at this Falls Church thing. Remember, here's Falls Church. The number of closed sales was six. If one of those properties sold at a lower price than um, the average price last year, last month, that's going to pull down that average considerably. So this Falls Church number is kind of false because the number of sales is so small. So we generally, uh, well, unless you live in Falls Church, I guess, but we generally don't uh, really worry about Falls Church numbers. We, we prefer, you know, countywide numbers. It gives us a better indication of what's really happening in the region. Here we can see that the number of new listings is down <clears throat> again, except Falls Church, um, where uh, this is this is really the critical thing. The raw number of new listings is down, which means there are going to be uh, fewer homes to buy in the future. And uh, as the demand increases, that's going to push um, prices up and create more competitive bidding. Months of supply, this is determined by determining, you take the total number of homes currently for sale and assuming no new homes on the market, how long would it take to sell the homes currently for sale? And so you can see we're at a number somewhere around one month or just slightly more, except for the city of DC. Um, a balanced market is when we're at six months. A balanced market is where the buyer and the seller have equal advantage. Um, with these numbers, we're in a seller's market where the seller has advantage. Um, it is easier now to negotiate uh, better terms as a buyer, but still the seller has the advantage. All right. Um, and then we look at the home demand index. And I wish they didn't do it this way because this is compared to last year. So year over year, the home demand index is down. If, however, we were to look at home demand index versus January, we'd see that the number is up. All right. Uh, my name is Taylor Johnson, and I'm a real estate agent with Keller Williams Capital Properties. I'm part of the N. Garcia team, and I'm here to be a resource for you. If there's anything I can do to... Uh, help you out, connect you to um, contractors or resources uh, such as lenders or uh, service providers, please uh, let me know. If I can help you interpret some of these numbers or uh, help you look for a home or help you prepare to sell a home, uh, reach out. And if you found this uh, video information uh, useful to you, please click the like button below so it finds its way to other people like you and subscribe to my channel. Uh, again, Taylor Johnson here. I look forward to hearing from you. Have a wonderful day.